Hi, and welcome to the lesson on citing sources in your work. My name is Alistair, and I'll be guiding you through this presentation. Okay, so some of the things that we will cover are why do we actually reference? What in fact is a reference? And finally, a little bit on how to reference. And we'll focus mostly just on in-text citations and not the uh, reference list at the end of your essay. We'll look at that another time. Okay, so let's say you were given an essay, just a nice and short one, a thousand words uh, from your teacher, and they've asked you to explore the advantages and disadvantages of being an international student at a British university. Well, what would be the first thing that you would do? In my case, I would suggest making a list. On one side, put the advantages, and on the other side, what you perceive to be the disadvantages. Okay, so let's see. An advantage of being an international student at a British university is that you can meet new people from all over the world. Okay. And let's say some of the disadvantages are that you are very far from home. Okay. So there's bound to be many more advantages and disadvantages, and we could sit here and think of some more. However, let's, uh, let's not do that. Let's move on. Now, the next thing I would probably say was uh, maybe make an outline. So how would you organize those ideas, the advantages and disadvantages? Uh, that's entirely up to you. Then I guess we just start writing. Well, not yet. There's something else we need to do. And something else that's very important that we need to include. Okay, and this is this fundamental idea um, in academic work that we make use of other people's ideas. And this doesn't mean that we're just copying their ideas and not saying anything ourselves. It's more a combination of the two. Uh, so in some cases you might want to support an idea of yours, so therefore you go and find someone else that has similar ideas and you could quote or paraphrase them. Uh, you may also want to use uh, ideas from someone else, put them in your essay, and then say why well, you disagree with them. There's lots of different things we can do, um, but we'll look a little bit at how we go about doing this. The actual mechanics of citing someone else's work isn't that difficult, um, especially when you're quoting. You're just quoting direct material just like this here, you got the quote, a little bit of your own words, a citation where it came from right here, and again some of your own words. It's that combination. It does get a lot more difficult when we start paraphrasing, um, and that is something that we will address at another point. Until then, let's look at the actual mechanics of how to cite. Okay, so You've got your own ideas, or maybe you haven't got your own ideas just yet. Um, and you read through a number of different sources, um, thereby perhaps developing your ideas further or maybe changing them. Um, you've got to take lots of notes while you're doing this, and um, you try and find information that you think will help you answer the question, basically. Um, and it's really important when you do find information that you think is going to be helpful to you that you record all of the uh, necessary information you will need to put in your citation as well as in your reference list. Okay, sounds fairly easy. Um, and some might interpret this as merely cutting and pasting uh, chunks of text from uh, some web page and um, putting the author or the name of the web page and then 
a few sentences from himself and that's it. Unfortunately, it's not that easy. Okay. So let's look at um, let's look at trying this out now with some examples. Um, basically, uh, the University of Lincoln uses a kind of referencing system called Harvard, and this involves putting the uh, the author's name and the date of publication. Now, um, a common mistake people make is that they put the full name or just the first name. It's important to focus only on their last name. Okay, so let's say uh, James Bond. We don't want to put according to James or according to James Bond. We're just going to put Bond. Okay, and whenever he said whatever it is that we're quoting, he put the year in, so maybe it's 1963. That would be our in text citation there. Okay. Um, the other place we need to put information will be at the very end, as I said before, in the reference list. It's also called the bibliography. Um, they're much and such the same. The bibliography, the only difference being that you also put books or sources in that you haven't necessarily quoted but you've read and been influenced by. I wouldn't worry too much about that. Just call it a reference list. Okay. So here's three examples. Um, all the same information. Um, but presented differently. Uh, again, we're just using the Harvard style. Uh, so you'll see here we've got the author and the date. In this case, because these are our direct quotations, we also have to include the page number. Um, you might ask yourself why. Well, it's so that uh, the person reading it, maybe a teacher or another student, can uh, find the quote that you've used uh, on the exact page. Uh, maybe they want to use it in their own work or they might want to check to see if it's accurate or you've misrepresented the, uh, the uh, person that you're quoting. There's various different reasons. Um, okay, so three examples. In this case, um, we've got the author, and it's part of the text, part of the text that you would read if you read it out loud. Um, the next part is in brackets. Now, if you're reading it, you wouldn't actually read that part, so it should read as, as Brown states, Gonzo Journalism was founded by Hunter S. Thompson. Um, inside the brackets, we have we have the date and the page. Easy. Uh, we also have right after that a reporting verb, and we'll discuss these in the, the next slide. You'll notice that in the quote we have quotation marks here, and all this does is show the reader where your words end and where the quote, the other person's words, begins. Okay, next example, again, quite similar to the first. In this case, we've got the, uh, the verb here, and then the author, and the rest of the information, the date, and the page, in brackets again, and the same quote. The final one is slightly different insofar as we have paraphrased some of the original quotes. So you'll see that uh, in the original quote here, we refer, refer to this author, uh, Hunter Thompson. In this case, it's out of the text, so it's our words now, and we've written what we interpret that to mean, and only quoted a small part of it here, same as you find here. Okay. In this case, because we haven't used the author that we've quoted from, as part of the text that you read, we put it all at the very end in the brackets. Okay, so there again you've got Brown, the author, same as the author here, and here, and the uh, here and page. It's really up to you um, how you decide to format your citations. All of these are fine. Um, what I recommend is try and mix it up, use a bit of, um, use different kinds as you go along. Uh, to make it interesting for your reader. Uh, lastly, uh, if you do have to use a long quote, and we recommend that you don't, if you can avoid it, um, if it's quite long, say a paragraph, maybe three, four, five lines, 
it should no longer be part of the text as it is with these ones. It should be indented and starting on a new line. Okay. Oh, another point. Uh, the reason why we don't like you to use uh, very long quotes uh, is because, well, firstly, it, it, it's a bit lazy. Um, if you've got a large chunk of material that you would like to use in your essay, we uh, suggest that you summarize or paraphrase. It also shows that you've understood what it is you're actually uh, reading and using in your essay. You should only really quote something that you can't put into your own words that's um, written so well. Now, as I mentioned previously, there are a number of different verbs you can use before you uh, provide the quote. Um, it's important to realize that they are not all the same. So what we suggest is that you use tentative or neutral verbs. The reason being, strong verbs basically suggest that what the author has said um, is, is very convincing. They strongly believe whatever it is, the information that you're quoting or paraphrasing. Uh, if you are slightly unsure of how convinced the author is about a specific point, if you're not sure, um, maybe due to the complexity of the language or you just don't know, it's better to play it safe. And that's why we suggest using these verbs, the tentative ones, which means they're, they're cautious about what they're saying. So they suggest or they speculate. Or, or neutral, which basically just means that they're just telling you about something. It's just, uh, it, it doesn't show either way whether it's uh, strong or, or weak. If you do paraphrase something, and we will come to this another point, um, you have the information that you've put in your own words. You'll notice that there are no quotation marks because these are your words. Now the ideas have come from come some, someone else. So although they are your words, they're not your own ideas. So you still have to reference. So you need to put in text citation right here, in brackets, name of the author and the year. Uh, finally, once you've got uh, au fait with how to do your in-text referencing your citations. Uh, the next thing you need to tackle are your uh, reference list uh, slash bibliography. And this is uh, how the information might look. So you've got the author, and maybe uh, Ricky Ricardo, and last name Jordan. That's the important name, really. Uh, the title of the piece of information that you're using, the uh, book or journal. In this case, it'd be a book. When it was published, the edition, now you'll notice that uh, if it is a first edition, you need not put uh, which edition it is, it's just that's the first one. So this doesn't necessarily have to be in there if it's the first. Where it was published, so the uh, town or the city, in this case Harlow, and the, um, the company who published it, Pearson. Now if you are um, quite sharp and awake, depending on time, that you are watching this at, you might have noticed that in the example of what the reference looks like, uh, the place of publication is actually incorrect. So that in fact should be Harlow. All right. Everybody makes mistakes, I guess. Um, and that's it. Uh, you will have other chances and opportunities to apply um, in text uh, citations in class and you also get a chance to do some um, referencing and bibliography work at some point as well. Uh, thanks for listening and uh, have a good evening, day or morning.